there. I just wanted to hop on real quick and show you a tutorial on how to make boom cards. This is how I make them. There are several different ways how you can make them, but I actually make them right through the platform. So let's get started. First, you'll want to sign in. I'm a teacher and I sign in with my Google. Of course, I don't know my password, so that's always an easy option. If you do not have an account, you can join for free. You do have to pay to make the decks. So, especially during these times, I highly recommend it. You can make decks for your students and track their data for RTI. This is a great way to get them engaged, especially if you have to do a homebound like we are currently doing uh, uh, throughout the country. All right, it should be logging in. There we go. All right, so what we need to do, this is gonna be quick, but you can rewind, play it again. So here I go. This is from scratch. So you go to studio. You're gonna make decks. Um, you're gonna make a new deck. And it's gonna give you a blank slate right here. I am going to, I always look, this is your template card. So this is what you're gonna build off of. So I already have an idea of what I want to do. So I'm gonna go to a background image. I'm going to go ahead and choose a spring-like background. I have a lot of different backgrounds uploaded. Um, this one right here is from Pretty Graphic. She's got a lot of great backgrounds and a lot of them come with her uh, bundles. So. You can grab those. Um, I've already picked out who the, my little characters that I want. This is from Edge Eclipse, um, another great clip artist that I use all the time. I think I'm going to use the pig. And so it's just a drag and drop. Oop. Of course, it typically is a drag and drop. <laughs> Let's try that again. Drag and drop it. And it's going to take a minute while I'm... Let's see, I like to do ones that their signs are, I kind of want the signs to be about the same. Let's do this one. They look like they're about the same. Okay, we can make that work. All right, so we've got a little pig and it looks like a little kitty cat. My kitty cat looks like, well, yeah, that should work. My little friends here. All right, so I'm going to do a little base 10 thing. I'm going to add my text to this box. And it always is kind of a little wonky to begin with. And I'm going to put um, four tens. Okay, I don't like that font. You can add fonts, and maybe I'll do another tutorial on how to add fonts, but Right now, I'm going to do KB First Grown. I think that that's still a little too small, so I'm going to click up the size. Let's see, 64. That might be a little too big. Well, maybe not. All right, so I'm going to try to get it in there as best I can. Oop. I like to center them. All right, so there's that one. And then I'm just going to come over here to Duplicate. Take it. Put it over here, and I'm going to do whoop, three ones. Ooh, that one's going to be, I might have to change the font size on both to match. So let's go down to a 48, and you have to actually highlight that to get to go to a 48. All right, so that looks about right. Maybe my kitty cat's maybe, maybe they look a little off. Let me just go back away. There we go. All right. So now I want the student to type in a box over here. I want them to type in what the number is. So I'm going to use the fill in the blank. And what I like to do before I even do any edit to it, I'm going to change the background to a white. And then I'm going to change the border to a black. And then you can change the width. 
I like five. And then I like to do radius as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of roundness. Then you can actually make it bigger here. All right, now I could double click it to edit it. And um, obviously, I forgot what number I used. Uh, 43. Okay, so you're going to type in the number 43. You're going to submit it. The font I want to use, I want to use the same font. And I can look over here to see how big it's getting as I'm going up. I know it's probably, I know it's probably going to be at least 60. So let's start with, well, sometimes it gets a little wonky. So you have to kind of just go with it. There we go. Sometimes you can't see the number because the box is hiding it and it won't move. So you'll have to use over here instead, but this time we could actually see it. So let's try to get it as big as the others. All right, that one looks good. Okay, I like to align it to center. Uh, let's see. And see, sometimes it changes it back. So it's a little frustrating sometimes to work on the platform, but to me overall, this is the easiest way to do it. Some people do it through PowerPoint. All right, so instead of me talking, let's go ahead and enter it so that it does it. Let's see, and sometimes it even switches back. So here we go. All right, see it switched it back because sometimes it's just a little tricky. All right, so we're gonna double click it again. Let's put in, we know that it's gonna be 60. I'm gonna hit enter, okay? All right, so now we've got our template card locked in. Now, we'll need to go down to, I'm going to put in directions later. I like to kind of think of them as I go, and I edit them as I go. So right now I'm thinking something along the lines of, um, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it later. I'm, I like to change wordings and sometimes I'll move my animals down and you'll do it on the template card so we probably need to go ahead and do that first and here and you can actually make now that we know that this box is going to fit can I go in yeah there we go now that we know that box is going to fit, we're going to go ahead and play with this template card first before we make any big changes. Because once you start making changes, it's hard to make changes throughout the whole entire, because then you're going to have to move all of these other components. So let's go ahead and make our changes now. All right. Perfect. I still... I'm happy with the font size. All right, and that gives me plenty of room on top to write my directions. And it's gonna show up, I'll show you. Um, I'll go down to number one, and I'm gonna duplicate that one. And it still has my directions up here that I have not written. So um, we're gonna go ahead and put, let's do eight. Tens and two ones. You're going to double click that. You're going to hit the back button there. And that's 82. Submit. And you're off to the next one. So as you can see, it's so easy. So let's see. Let's do uh, three tens and one one and we're gonna go on here and we're gonna go 31 submit all right so now we're going to trick the students not really um and we're going to switch this to five ones and one Let's see if they're paying attention because it is not 51, everyone. It is 15. Okay. So, quick, simple, easy way to do a deck. Now, let's go into it through the details. So, once you've made your deck, I usually make them around 25. Um, 
grades. This is going to be kindergarten at the end of the year, first grade, second grade at the beginning of the year. We'll probably do this. So um, phase 10, we could, of course, add more keywords to this later on. Usually for 25 cards, I do it at 200 points. I like to keep it at randomized. <clears throat> and um, maybe another video, I'll show you how to do flow magic. Um, those are always fun as well. All right, we're not going to publish it yet. We're going to go on to subject. And this is obviously mathematics. And then about. And then we're going to create a description. Quickly, I'm just going to put uh, help your student master base 10. And then I will go back and add more to the description. Acknowledgements. Uh, I told you that I use Pretty Graphic. She spells it a little different. I believe that's how it is. I'll go back, back and double check. And then an EduClip is another one that we used. All right. So I can go back and add to this at any time. Of course, I'm going to add more of a description, put my little snippet there. Um, once you are done, oh, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. All right. So TPT Other. Um, once you are done and you're going to list it, you're going to click here. I'll make another video later on how I put together a PDF and I batch all of them at one time. So I might make about five or six decks and then I will batch them and I will do the PDFs for five or six of them because I'll have them all up on the screen and I'll just, I'll knock them all out in like an hour. I can do five of them at a time. Um, it actually, it takes me, I timed it. It takes me about 15 minutes to do each deck um, to upload them up to TPT. Okay, so we are going to get out of here, but I want to show you how to check your deck. So we're going to go back to our first card and we're going to click preview. And it's going to come up and four, three, 43, submit. Yes, it's correct. That was loud. Okay, so I'm going to put 28 just to show you what happens when you get it wrong. It says, and then it highlights it, and then it wants you to put in the correct answer. I like to go through every single one of my cards just to make sure I have gotten them right. Uh, so obviously this is only four of them, but what I'll do is I'll usually do 25. I'll go through my whole entire deck, and yes, I have caught several mistakes doing it that way. Even after I've done it that way, I'll have students do them, and I'll still make small adjustments. All right, so once you've already done all of that, you've created your details, you've done all of your preview. Um, on an another one, I'll show you how to create a PDF and upload it to your TPT store. Um, I'll actually do another one for teachers to show how to track data in, uh, for RTI. Hope this helps everyone. I hope you're having a blessed week. Bye-bye.